Hey guys, welcome back to our series of NTech DMX's tutorials. I'm David Henry from LearnStageLighting.com and in this video I want to talk about channel masking and how you're going to love it. And if you're new to DMX's or you've been using it for a while but you don't use channel masking, this video is for you and, and you really don't want to miss it because this can save you a ton of time. So first of all, where is channel masking and what the heck is it? So channel masking is something that uh, we're going to find partially in the macros. Under channel masks, we've got disable all channels, disable selected channels, enable all channels, and enable selected channels. And so what the heck is channel masking? Channel masking is basically a professional console principle called tracking and how we put it into play. So I'm going to explain this the best way that I possibly can. I'm going to try to um, explain it to someone who's never used tracking before. And I think DMXs does a really good job at this, so it'll, it'll make sense. But this is kind of, kind of an advanced concept in lighting programming. So just hold on tight to your seat, listen close, and if it doesn't make sense, rewind and listen to it again. We're at about a minute 30 right now, so you can rewind back there. So channel masking, basically, um, stepping back a step further, when you go to record something, your presets in DMXs, it records every fader and the value that the fader has. So every one of these faders, all the fixtures you've got patched in your show, and then it records the value that is on that fader as well. So what does this do for you? Well, it means that when you record every value on every single fader, it means that when you're in one preset, say I'm in this one that says verse, and I change something, then I overwrite it, and then I go to this intro preset, it means that the changes that I just made in this first preset, in that case I had brought blue down to zero, let me bring blue up to 90, can hit overwrite, and when I go to this intro preset right after it, you can see blue is still at zero where it was before, because every channel in the queue, in the preset rather, stays recorded. Every queue gets recorded into every preset in DMXs so that when you make changes, it doesn't affect other queues. However, there might be times where you want the changes to affect the other queues. For example, let's just take our blue because that's what we we're playing with. Go back to our verse preset. And so say that we are in our verse, our blue's up at 90, then we're going to go to our intro, and our blue's down at zero. But what we really want is for our blue to be whatever it was in the verse preset, in our intro preset. So we may have different shows, and, and this is especially true with a position preset, um, where you know, we're going to update the level of that blue for a different show and we want it to, tr to be the same on verse as it is in intro. We don't want it to change, but we know that every show we're going to be changing that value. And so wouldn't it be cool if it could just track through to the next queue? It can. And that's channel masking. So let me do a little demo, show you what this looks like. We're going to select our macro. We're going to click, just to show you, disable all channels. And so you can see, they kind of uh, faded back. They kind of grayed out, went a little translucent. And what this means in DMX is, is that those channels are not going to be recorded into the preset when you hit that overwrite button or you, you create a new preset. Um, anytime you're doing that save in DMX is, and you've got channels that are grayed out like this, that are translucent, they are not going to record. So, go back 
enable those channels. And we'll take our blues. What we're going to do, make sure I'm on the right cue first. Well, actually, yeah, I want to be on this intro cue. Get select all our blues. And we're going to go macro, channel masks, disable selected channels. So what we did there, you can see they've grayed out real nice. And so now at this point, if we hit overwrite, which we're going to do, those channels that are grayed out, those blues, are not going to be recorded. They're going to be set as a value of null, as you'd say if, if you were in computer science, meaning no value. They're not set at a value of zero. They're not set at a value of anything else. They're, they're just nothing. So, can okay, go in here, overwrite, boom. So now you see they've been recorded with a value of nothing. So now we go to our verse. Look, our blue's at 90. Pop into our intro. Our blue's at 90, and you can see it has that value of nothing. So now, go back to our verse, rather. Now we're going to edit this. We're going to grab all our blues, take them to 50. Preset manager. Overwrite. Awesome. Make sure I click the button just right. I did. So we've overwritten that. Now, go back to our intro. Now our blues are at 50. And so, you can probably see here how by masking fixtures, whole fixtures, um, attributes like this blue, you know, maybe intensities, maybe, maybe there's cues where you literally mask everything except for a few channels. And, and you can see that if you um, disable all your channels and then you start se selecting them they automatically come back into your programming so keep that in mind um, that that's a way to bring just a few fixtures in disable everything and, and bring them back in like that but you can see how by by disabling some channels or or most of our channels and only recording the things that you want to change you can speed up your programming and especially your updating where if you're at a different venue and you've got something that you don't want to change throughout the whole song but at the start of your song at that first preset in the preset manager you want that different at different shows you know whether it's a position or a gobo or whatever it is you change that in that first preset and then you leave those fixtures masked off. You disable them in all your future presets. You know, you may have 10 of them or something. Then you just have to change that first preset and the changes are going to track through. So I hope that makes sense. I hope you, you understand that. And if it doesn't make sense right now, um, think about it for a while. Come back to this video later and watch it again because I really want you to be able to understand how channel masking works because it's really, really powerful and it can save you a ton of time. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And now in our last video, we're going to show you how to set up MIDI control. This is gonna be fun. It's really easy, a really inexpensive way that you can add some cool functionality to DMXs and I'm going to be showing you how exactly to do that. I'll see you guys there. Thanks.